today i will be discussing on the formation and functions of the circle of willis what is circle of willis it is a ring of arterial connection at the base of the brain and this ring of arterial connection at the base of the brain is described by dr thomas willis 400 years back how this ring is formed this ring is formed by three input arteries three pairs of output arteries and three communicating arteries i say it again three input arteries three pairs of output arteries and three communicating arteries the three input arteries include two internal carotid arteries on either side and basilar artery posterior the basilar artery is formed by the joining of the two vertebral arteries the basilar artery branch out as the posterior cerebral artery this is a posterior cerebral artery this side and this side the posterior cerebral artery and the internal carotid artery branch out as the middle cerebral artery and the anterior cerebral artery the two anterior cerebral arteries are connected by anterior communicating artery the the posterior cerebral artery and the middle cerebral artery are communicated by the the posterior communicating artery on either side this side and this side so thus we have the posterior communicating artery this entire thing completes the circle circle of uh, arterial structures uh, in the base of the brain suppose if something obstructs here the blood from this side may try to supply and come and uh, supply to these branches because the suppose i am telling about the posterior uh, left posterior cerebral artery i am talking about uh, and uh, this part is obstructed there is no blood supply here so now this would this would come by this uh, particular anastomotic uh, branch here enter communicating artery the posterior communicating artery here and they will bring back the circulation uh, this is about the the functionality of the circle of willis now let us come back in this circle of willis these input arteries of this thing are coming from the this is the this is the uh, the arch of aorta so this is the brachiocephalic artery divides into carotid artery and the subclavian artery the carotid artery comes the common carotid artery divides into external carotid artery and the internal carotid artery so now the internal carotid artery uh, gives branches to the anterior cerebral and uh, the middle cerebral artery as i have you can just see this side and that side so that means the arch of the aorta suppose the blood is coming from here so the first this is the one which uh, which receives then comes the subclavian artery then comes the third is the uh, the intracranial artery and uh, the left uh, subclavian artery now coming back here these are the two vertebral arteries they are the branches of the subclavian artery and they join together to form the basilar artery and from the basilar artery you have these uh, the posterior cerebral arteries coming up this is the posterior cerebral artery you can just see here these are the two vertebral arteries joining to form the basilar artery and these basilar arteries uh, uh, making the the, the posterior uh, cerebral artery the internal carotid artery and this is the middle cerebral artery so, so you just see that this is the middle cerebral artery and uh, this is the anterior cerebral artery so they are uh, they are communicated here anteriorly with the internal communicating artery in this particular uh, picture you can just see that uh, uh, two vertebral arteries forming the basilar artery so this is the pons and the medulla and then you can just see that uh, uh, these uh, basilar arteries branching out as a posterior cerebral arteries and then we have this uh, 
uh, the internal carotid, this is the internal carotid coming here, if you're, if you're looking at this is the internal carotid artery, and this internal carotid branching as uh, the middle cerebral artery, just see that the middle cerebral artery, and this is the anterior cerebral artery. And uh, now these two anterior cerebral arteries are communicated by the anterior uh, uh, communicating artery. This is the anterior communicating artery. And uh, the, the posterior cerebral artery and the middle cerebral artery are joined by the, uh, the posterior communicating artery. Thus, we have uh, uh, three pairs of output arteries, the anterior, middle, and posterior cerebral arteries. So they are... Uh, given time supply the entire part of the brain. Usually the left and the right sub blood supply is uh, not mixed up. But under circumstances of obstruction or under circumstances of uh, uh, obstruction to one of the major branches. So what happens? These communicating arteries open up. Usually these communicating arteries are narrower and they offer a uh, large degree of resistance for the flow. Thus, uh, the left and the right brain, right blood supply, uh, blood supply to the left and right hemispheres uh, remains uh, almost uh, uh, not mixed up, or uh, they are parallel. So these cerebral arteries are uh, branching out. So these cerebral arteries uh, travel on the surface of the brain, and uh, then they will branch as the pile artery. This is one of the pile artery here. These spiral arteries branch out perpendicularly into the brain tissue. This is a brain tissue here. And uh, as it enters, it divides into a number of arterioles and capillaries. And here you see that this is a pyometra there. And uh, the, here you have a, a, a what happens, these, uh, these are called penetrating arteries. So these penetrating arteries are penetrating vessels. Uh, they divide further into arterioles. The penetrating arteries are separated by uh, an extension of the subarachnoid space. This is the subarachnoid space, subarachnoid space here. This is the pia and the uh, arachnoid membrane, and this is subarachnoid uh, space. This is, this is known as the virtual rubbing space. The pial arteries are separated from a brain tissue. This is the brain tissue here uh, by an extension of the subarachnoid space. The pile arteries branch out as arterioles, and then capillaries come up and they make the venules and the veins and then drain into the uh, dural sinuses, subdural sinuses. And uh, these capillaries uh, exchange the oxygen, carbon dioxide, nutrients, and metabolites, which are permeable. One interesting thing is that everything which is present in the blood cannot pass through because uh, if, you are, if you are looking at the, the formation of these, uh, the, the pial arteries, they are by the limitons. This, this is the, the what are called the glial limitons. The glial limitons, they, they, they prevent, they, they protect, they prevent the entry of other things uh, surrounded by the astrocytic uh, feet processes. Are, the feed processes of the astrocytes. So you can just see here how this uh, blood vessel is covered by the, uh, almost uh, uh, embraced by the astrocytic uh, feed processes. So now, so th that is how they make a tight junctions and they will not allow any material uh, uh, to leak out into the brain. This is the brain tissue. That is one part. At the same time, they will also have a cover of the synaptic space. This is the synaptic space here. And they will also uh, embrace the synaptic space and they will also protect because uh, the glia have or the astrocytes have a number of extra synaptic functions. Uh, uh, they provide the raw material, they clear, keep the homeostasis and they metabolize the whatever the products here are these things, housekeeping the part. So they have a lot of functions. The, these feed processes are also covering the, the uh, synapses. That forms the architecture of the uh, blood vessels. So these three major arteries, the anterior, middle, and the posterior cerebral arteries, uh, supply different parts of the brain. So now you can just see that the anterior cerebral artery this is the yellow, yellow shade is the anterior cerebral artery. This is the lateral surface, and this is the societal section. This is the medial surface. You can just see that the extensive area here on the top of the brain. 
on the lateral surface and the extensive area here, the interior, almost the entire interior part of this thing is covered by the, the anterior uh, cerebral artery. So now to name the structures, here is the frontal area and here forms the, the some part of the pre-motor and the motor area and this is the somatosensory area. And if you are looking at the homunculus, uh, on the top of this thing, uh, you may either have uh, some part of the feet and the, the shoulders coming up, shoulder coming up, and uh, th that is the area of representation in terms of the homunculus. And here you have the, the polar uh, frontal area that is uh, coming up. If you are looking at the interior, so you can just see that the interior part, the, that means uh, whatever is inside the homunculus, that means uh, the genitals and the, the bladder and uh, other parts, the legs, uh, they are covered by the, the this is another sensory area here, and uh, the either motor or sensory, sensory homunculus, if you are looking at. This is uh, what happens in case of the uh, front, frontal area. Uh, and uh, uh, one interesting is the carpus callosum is almost three quarter cover. The, this is cingulate cortex. You can just see that the entire cingulate cortex is covered up. So that means uh, it, it covers the anterior, anterior cerebral artery covers up uh, these areas. The middle cerebral artery, on the other hand, you can just see this reddish area or uh, the pinkish area, you can just think about on the entire lateral surface of the, the hemisphere on either side, the left or right, whatever the branch is. Yeah. So now this is lateral surface. You can just see that this lateral surface, this, com this consists of the uh, motor areas uh, which are descending down, then maybe hand, the writing, then uh, Broca's area here, the Wernicke's area here, auditory area here, and uh, some association areas there, and even some part of the temporal cortex, uh, they are all uh, covered by this uh, middle septal artery. Now, if you are looking at the, the sagittal section or the medial part, only this part, especially this part, is uh, covered up, otherwise, not, not much, and this part may be part of the uh, limbic area. Now, uh, coming back to the posterior, posterior, you have the entire posterior part of the cerebral cortex is supplied and even to the part of the, uh, the inferior temporal area. So this is the inferior temporal uh, area is supplied by the, uh, the posterior cerebral artery. Besides that, if you are taking the middle medial section, you can just see that this is uh, extending itself to the carpus callosum. A part of the cingulate, and you have the hippocampus, and even uh, if you are looking at the midbrain, the retinal nucleus, thalamus, hypothalamus, and all those areas are uh, covered by the covered by this uh, posterior cerebral arteries, uh, and uh, some part of the if you are if you are looking at this uh, this pons there, it's the limbic areas uh, and the carpus callosum they are all covered by the posterior cerebral artery. And if you are looking at the, the, the pontomedullary area, it is the basilar artery and its branches, and they supply the pontomedullary area. And even a part of the cerebellum, if you are looking at the because cerebellum, you can just see that the cerebellum is covered up here by these two vertebral arteries and the, um, the basilar arteries. Basilar arteries, they cover up the, the entire brain area. So this is what we supply, a part supplied by the the various branches. Now, what are the functions of the circle of pillars? Uh, interesting point about the circle of pillars is that uh, it is generated by a uh, different branches of the arterial tree. So there is a asymmetry in their uh, origin. That means uh, right internal carotid, the left internal carotid, the right subclavian, the left subclavian and their branches. So, so that means the blood reaching from one part of the aortic cord to the other side, there is, a, there is a asynchrony, asynchrony of the blood reaching and reaching to the particular site in the, either in the posterior cerebral space or the internal carotid artery supply. So that means the, the pressure maintain, it maintains the pressure within the, the circle of release so that there is a constant pressure head for the profusion of the brain. Uh, that is how it provides. So that means it's a, the first part of the function is the pressure dissipating system. 
and uh, in physiological conditions, the circle of the leaf serves as a passive pressure dissipating system, as I mentioned. Because of the uh, difference, uh, the blood flow arrived from different arteries asynchronously. It's not in the same simultaneous way. And uh, it is because of the asymmetry of the arterial tree. This, thus, because of the pressure dissipating system, it keeps the uh, constant pressure head and protect the cerebral arteries for any adverse changes, either rise or fall, so that uh, to keep the blood brain barrier and uh, the hemodynamic uh, uh, supply to the brain areas. Then second, it's the emergency time. The, that means when uh, they provide alternate circulation at times of emergency, especially when there is obstruction or narrowing of its branches. So that means it opens up those uh, anterior communicating artery or the posterior communicating artery. And uh, once they open up, the, the circulation is uh, the covered up. Okay, so now it has a limit and it uh, uh, the opening up because of these uh, narrow, interior communicating artery or the posterior communicating artery, the narrowness, the high resistance, sometimes it may not be able to uh, cover up the total entirety, stroke or any other abnormality or ischemia or anoxia. Under such circumstances, because of the, the clearance, because they, they provide the circulation back, so they, pro, they will reduce the damage and offer effects produced by, uh, produced by obstruction and stroke because it's the next stage. So now, this is by diverting the circulation, making the clearance of the, the metabolites and supplying the oxygen, taking off the carbon dioxide and metabolites, and that's how this, it, it helps to reduce the damage and other effects. Circular release acts as a safety wall for the blood supply to brain and make sure that cerebral blood flow is uniform, uh, even on the adverse uh, conditions of blood supply. Now, the key words for this um, topic, the anterior cerebral artery, the middle cerebral artery, the posterior cerebral artery, the in space, the basilar artery, the functions of circle of these. Uh, please, uh, you can read on these topics uh, to a little more or revise on them. Now, uh, the reference books uh, include the, the, the candles, neuroscience, uh, the guidance textbook of physiology, medical physiology. And uh, the, I, I read this article published in the Journal of uh, Cerebral Blood Flow and Metabolism by Versija et al. in 2014 regarding the things of the cerebral fluids. It's an interesting to read. One can, uh, I, I recommend it to you. Next class, I will discuss about uh, regulation of our cerebral. Thank you.